Welcome back to the second part of the Quest 3 Mixed Reality Tutorial Series. In the previous episode, we've seen how to do the setup for Path Through. And in this video, we are going to look into how we can understand the world around us and use it in our game with the scene model. As always, make sure to subscribe down below to not miss the next episode about the Depths API. You can always find the source project on my Patreon, where I will also release an exclusive tutorial that will feature making a complete mixed reality game from scratch using what we learned. A big shout out also to the sponsor of this video, Wonderland Engine. Wonderland Engine is a game engine that focuses on making both augmented and virtual reality games on the web. It is free to download, easy to use and is already working with Quest 3 as well. I've previously also done a tutorial about it on this channel to get you started that you can find in the description below. Thank you for your support Wonderland and without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so here we are where we were left at the end of last episode. Now, to use the real world into our game, we will need one of Quest's greatest feature, the scene model. So, a scene model is basically a setup that you can request when someone opens up your VR game. That will make the user scan its surrounding and allow him to also add some particular volume to his furniture. Now, to sum up, this will create three things. First, some plane for the wall some volume for the furniture, and finally a global mesh which is a bit more precise. Now let's see how we can use it for our Quest 3 XR game right here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to need is the OVR scene manager. So let's search for it in the project folder. There it is, we can drag it in our AR key. Now, as you can see, this OVR scene manager needs two things, the plane prefab and the volume prefab. We can find these two prefab if we go to Oculus, Sample Framework, Usage, Scene Manager, and then Prefab. And there it is. Now, for now, let's simply drag the volume inside the volume prefab and the plane inside the plane prefab. Finally, to support the OVR scene manager, we need to go to the OVR camera rig and there, down below, as we did for the path through, we need to enable the scene support here. So let's simply set it from none to support it. There we go. Now, by default, it should automatically also add the Encore support and set it to enable. But if it's not the case, make sure it says it. Now anyway, believe it or not, but by simply adding this OVR scene manager and enabling the setting on the OVR camera rig, we have finished with the setup with the scene model. So let's simply build our game to find out if this works. Okay, so as you can see, after launching the game, if you have not already set up a scene model for the Quest 3, it will ask you to do so. And after finishing to scan it, set the wall and the different volume in our scene, the application finally launched and as you can see, we can now see the little cube that we made in the previous episode, but we can see all of the planes which have spawned based on the wall around us. We also see here the volume that have spawned from the different furniture that I added. Now, it means that everything is working, but the issue is that in my case, I don't want to have any plane or cube showing. I only want the colliders. So let me show you how we can fix this. Okay, so to remove the volume and plane mesh, but only keep the collider, it's very simple. We can click on one of the two prefab. And there, as you can see, next to the plane, we also have here the invisible plane. We can drag it instead of the plane and do the same for the invisible volume that will replace the volume. Now, as you can see, if we double click on the invisible volume, as you can see, it is basically nothing, just a box collider. But for the other volume that we added earlier, if we double click on it, as you can see, it is basically, well, a mesh renderer and not just a collider. Okay, so with this, we should be able to interact physically with our scene. So to test this, I'm going to make a very simple script that will simply spawn a little ball that will bounce all around the scene. So let's get started on making this script. I'm going to select the right end and shore, click on add component and add a spawn ball component. There you go. Now in this script, I'm simply going to need two parameters, a public game object called prefab and a public float called spawn speed that we can set initially to maybe five. Now in the update function, I'm going to check if the uh, user is pressing on the right trigger button. We can do so with if OVR input 
dot get down ovr input dot button dot secondary index trigger beautiful secondary here means that it's the right hand and primary is the left hand now we can spool the uh, ball by doing game object spawn ball equals instantiate prefab and we can instantiate it in the position of the right hand now we can do so with transform.position and for the rotation, I don't want any rotation, so let's simply call the quaternion identity. Beautiful. Now we can get the rigid body of the ball by doing spawn ball rb equals spawn ball dot get component rigid body. And last but not least, we can give a certain velocity at the start when this ball is instantiated. And we can do so with spawn ball rb dot velocity equals transform dot forward multiply by spawn speed. There it is, it is already finished. Every time that we press on the right trigger button, we'll be able to first instantiate a certain prefab, but add an initial velocity to its rigid body. So what's left is to, of course, create the prefab that we want to instantiate. So for this, let's go back to Unity. I'm going to right click in the R key, go to 3D object sphere. We can call this one bounce sphere we can reset its position and i'm going to set its scale to dot one on all axis which will make it 10 centimeters now we can add a rigid body to this ball and maybe i'm going to change its materials to something else so let's right click go to create material call this one red and set the color to red we can then drag here the red material inside the materials on the mesh renderer beautiful Finally, we can also change the physics material on the sphere collider to make this ball bounce. We can create a new material by right-clicking in the project, go to create, and then here down below to physics material, we can rename it bounce, and we can set the bounciness to one. Beautiful, now let's simply drag the bounce physics material inside the sphere collider. Beautiful. And now to make sure that the collision always happens, we need to kind of improve the detection of the collision with this ball by setting the collision detection mode to continuous. Beautiful. Also, another setting that we can do is go to edit, project settings. And here, if we go to time, we can set the fixed time step to something a bit lower than 0.02. Now, basically, we need to set it to 1 divided by the frame rate of the headset, which is 120. So this gives us a fixed time step of 0 0.083333. Beautiful. Now, let's close these windows and everything should be ready. Just one thing to make sure it is to set this new bond sphere as a prefab to be instantiated by the spawn ball component. So let's drag the bond sphere inside the project windows to turn it into a prefab and store it inside our project. We can now remove the one that is in the hierarchy and simply now select the right hand anchor and drag the bond sphere over there on the prefab variable. Beautiful, now everything is ready. We should be able to, well, just spawn a ball from the right trigger index on our right controller. But only one way to find out, and it is to build our game. So let's do this. And there you go, guys. As you can see, this is amazing. I can simply, well, spawn a ball by pressing on the right trigger button, and it just bounces on the scene model that we just created earlier. That's awesome. Now, as you can see, it works pretty well from the different plane, but also the volume that we added earlier. Now, there is only one thing that we can improve from this. Well, if you remember, I told you that there were three things that were created. The plane for the wool, the volume for the furnitures, but also the complete scene mesh. And that's something that we can add here to our game to kind of make all of the collision with our wool more, more precise. So let me show you how we can do this. Okay guys, so to simply add the scene mesh collision as well, we need to go back to the OVR scene manager and here on the prefab overrides, we can click on the plus button and then we can select not the floor but the global mesh. Beautiful. Then if we go back to the prefab list that we had earlier, by going to Oculus, sample framework, usage, scene manager, prefab, global mesh, as you can see, we have four different global mesh that we can set. Some are just basic, some is just the collider, some is just the renderer, and some is the renderer as well as the collider. Now, in our case, we simply want the global mesh colliders to make sure that we can collide with all of the little details. 
of our scene. So let's simply drag inside the global mesh prefab override. And there it is. It is basically down. With this, we should be able to, on top of colliding to the wall and to the different furniture volume that we create, collide as well with all of the details of our scene that we have not set yet. That's amazing. So let's build our game and find out if this works. And there it is, guys. Look at what we already created in a few minutes. That's so cool. And that's also the proof that Mixed Reality is awesome. Now, make sure to subscribe down below for the next episode. You can, of course, join our community on Patreon if you want to get access to exclusive content like the source code of this tutorial and an extra episode where we will make a Mixed Reality game from scratch using what we learn. Before finishing up, make sure to check out Wonderland Engine, the sponsor of this video, which by the way already support Quest 3 and have their old tool to recreate the same thing for web VR. You can find the tutorial I made about Wonderland Engine in the description below. Now thank you for watching and see you soon, bye bye.